Welcome back, my name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to macOS 15 Sequoia, you can see we have a new update and this is macOS Sequoia 15.3 developer beta one. For me on my MacBook Pro, it comes in at exactly 3.3 gigs and I was updating from the previous macOS 15.2 update. Alongside this update, Apple also released the following versions, which are watchOS 11.3 beta, visionOS 2.3 beta, tvOS 18.3 beta, we have macOS 15.3 beta, of course, this is the video for that. And we have iOS and iPadOS 18.3 developer beta one. Most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman Half Tech. So if you wanna keep up to date, definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you stay up to date. I'm just quickly going to update my device and then we're gonna look at the new software changes among any further changes that this update has to offer. Just like that, my device is now up to date. You can see when it comes to macOS storage taken by the OS, it's actually reduced a little bit, almost by a gig in itself. And it's now 22.11 gigs. And if we click on the info tab right there, you can see for this update, the build number that we have is 24D50. 34F. So it does end with an F and in terms of stability, this goes to tell us that yes, we still have a couple more updates to come. And at the same time, you can see Apple intelligence is taking up 5.5 gigs, which was the same as the previous version. In terms of what's new, let me just center my window right here. If I click on the emoji tab right here in messages, you can see the emojis are still showing up like before. We don't have any blank spots. And at the same time, you can see just like what we have on the iPhone with iOS 18.2 going forward. We now have native support for Gen Emoji on the Mac. So if I click on that icon right there, we get this new new pop-up window that tells me about Gen Emoji and it says express yourself by describing Gen Emoji that you want to create. You can personalize your emojis and you can use Gen Emoji like emojis just like regular emojis and this is the new pop-up screen and it does tell you that it's in beta right there and this icon seems to have been updated it's slightly different from what we have with image playground if you just look at those if i click continue right there it says start with a few words or a phrase that best describes your idea there seems to be a bug because no matter what i do when i click on this describe a gen emoji field right here it automatically starts to type right there so so maybe if I just copy this by pressing command copy and then going to the gen emoji field and then I'll click here again and then if I press paste it now shows up and now if I click the enter or return it doesn't actually allow me to do that it has a bit of a delay and now you can see what it has created I can go through the many various options that it's generated and you can see some descriptions may create unexpected results and whenever you reach on the far right end of the results that it's generated you can see it will continue to generate and you can always go back to the first few generations I think this one actually looks really good if I liked it I can double click it and you can see to add it right there. If I want, I can copy it. But then if I want to send it to myself, I can click there and you can see it's sent. If I click on my emojis right there and then go to my recents, which is this tab that you see right there, you can see the one that I just created is there. And if I send it to myself, that's how it looks. And at the same time, the gen emojis that I created using my iPhone, you can see they actually look much bigger for some reason. If I send it to myself, you can see the size different. This is one that I created using Gen Emoji on the Mac, and this is Gen Emoji on the iPhone. But it's good to see that Gen Emoji is finally here and supported. Let me try and type again because it does seem to be buggy. I can say a car on a runway. And actually, I don't have to click enter for it to start generating. It automatically begins generating without even pressing return or enter. And you can see what it's generated a car on a runway. And this is pretty cool. And now if I want to add this one, I can click add like this and it adds it in the message. And if I haven't sent it, actually it automatically adds it to the recent tab right there if i even if i haven't sent it and of course if i send it to myself 
you can see how this looks so it's good to see that apple has added gen emoji support natively for the mac with this new update that we have on a quick side note if you are interested in apple intelligence which many people are actually not interested in it seems like apple came to the party rate you can see apple intelligence is coming to the eu in april 2025 with mac os 15.4 and with the latest ios 18.4 that's expected to be released in april 2025 now if you are already on mac os sequoia 15.2 and you are in any of these regions such as australia canada ireland new zealand south africa and the uk you got apple intelligence with mac os 15.2 and if you are in the rest of the eu then you are going to have to wait for mac os 15.4 that's expected to come out in april 2025 that's going to give you all the new features that apple intelligence has to offer those include writing tools gen emoji redesign siri and chat gpt integration among others and the ability to edit your photos with uh, cleanup and more but it seems like not many people are interested in this as of now because apple is somewhat late to the party when you open up image playground after updating you notice that the application itself received some minor updates and when you open the ui and see the different results that you've generated you can actually go in and edit and see how it's now going to generate more of similar results since we are using the same pictures but it seems to generate slightly different images i gave it some time to try and bring back the picture so that we can edit but you can see that that failed maybe we'll try a different one that doesn't have an image of me like this one for example if we go there and then click edit you can see okay it had overlaid the previous image by for some reason but now you can see when we click on it it actually brings this forward and now if we go to the next results you can see how it combines the images and the prompt that i would have added so make a picture of a green cow on a rainy day it's still added in the the, in the pool that it's using to be able to generate this but you can see it's added me by using the picture that i had added and if i remove the picture you can see how it looks and if i press command z that basically just undoes whatever change or whatever image i would have created but now you can see how it's able to easily combine pictures that you've added with words and whatever backgrounds you'd have made the results that it's generating look much better and at the same time you can go into the uh, style and be able to change from illustration which i actually like and go to animation let's see how long it takes this time around when going from illustration to animation maybe the fact that i have a lot of information doesn't really help but you can see the results are actually much better and yeah let's give it some time you can see this is the only generated option that it has it's taking its time and now i have the arrow to go to the next one and you can see what it has right there and yeah for me the results are much better and they seem improved if i'm happy with this i can save it or save as duplicate like this and if i go back like this um you'll be able to see the one that i would just created and right there we just created a duplicate of this one and this is the new version right there if you are using iphone mirroring after updating by default the larger window view is the one that's there and you can see right there if i go to the actual size this is how it looks but for the purposes of this demo i'll just go to the larger view and then i'll center this by function Control c and you can see when you go to the search tab right there there's a new pop-up screen that shows up that tells you ask siri and get step-by-step -step instructions and at the same time if you have dark mode enabled in many of the various settings including camera controls and right there they've now made all icons dark mode which is on par with the latest ios 18.3 version that just came out if you haven't updated your applications in the app store i would advise you to go in and update your applications as apple recently updated the iWorks, which are paid keynote and numbers and recently apple updated imovies as well and for the iWorks, they have updated it to work with apple intelligence and there's going to be many various pop-up screens that are going to tell you what those can do 
after updating them to support Apple intelligence. Fortunately, when it comes to mail categories in the settings or in the search, it doesn't actually highlight or enable the mail categories just like what we have on the iOS. So it seems like maybe this beta might not be the one to provide it for the Mac, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that on the final release, we might not have it. It's possible we could get that in a future beta. Going into Safari, it's actually been updated. You can see when we go to about Safari, the version has actually now been updated to version 18.3, unlike the previous version where we had Safari version 18.2 and the build number as well has been updated and incremented as you can see 20620. 2.2. Unfortunately, when it comes to the macOS Sequoia 15.3 developer beta release notes, you can see Apple hasn't really updated this page yet. This doesn't mean that nothing was changed within the OS as we go through the system and continue testing. If I find more things that warrant a video, then I'll definitely update you here on the channel. Now, one of the things I'm hoping that this update addresses is the battery life, because for me, battery life hasn't been that great in the last 10 days or since I updated to macOS 15.2. The battery life I've been getting hasn't been that great, but since I've just updated to this new version of macOS 15.3, I'll continue to test it and if it improves, I'll let you know in my next video for macOS. Now, other than that, that's about it for me. Let me know what you think about this video. If you liked it, definitely leave a like and subscribe for further macOS beta updates. My name is Ben and I'm signing off.